right now I'm just like I don't want to. I, I would like to be able to say that I've never experienced it. You know? <laughs> but then you you're start a gold to see, star. Yeah, but then you start to see some of these like videos, like Harry Potter rap videos and stuff like that. You're like, that's kind of awesome. <laughs> that's actually <laughs> sick as hell. Yeah, right. one of my friends' algorithms is entire algorithm is just like SpongeBob characters singing. Uh, oh, like voiceover. Y- yes. Yeah, like uh, How to Save a Life by the Prey. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's on. All right. Is this on? This is on. It's on. Okay. It does, you can put your watch on. Okay. <laughs> You're so nervous. You want to impress me so bad, right? <laughs> this is a really nice watch I just got. It's a, it is a Gucci watch. Oh, really? Yeah. It's a $900, uh, well, it says Casio on it, and it looks like the $20 version on Amazon, but it's actually... <laughs> I actually spent way more money than I yeah, had to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't be <laughs> fooled by the way it looks. It's very <laughs> this watch was um, uh, $16 at Walmart. Nice, nice. Pretty okay. good. All right, you beat me. This is actually a $22 watch. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm smarter than you. Yeah, look at that. I, uh, I just needed a watch so I could time my sets, but also not have to... All digital watches are the ugliest thing yeah they're all yeah, giant yeah. chunky yeah, yeah. like for the military i don't yeah. know what that's <laughs> yeah. all about so i want something like this that wasn't a smart watch but was also a digital display it kind of looks like a smart watch though you kind of already have that aesthetic tricking so. people yeah yeah how's tricking people with that is everyone impressed with well, you i just switched back to this one uh so i had like a a metal casio one uh uh-huh. same thing like 22 bucks but it got stuck on my wrist last weekend, like where I could not get it off and it was <laughs> on super tight. And I had like a minor freak out and I just like ripped it off. Um, so now we're you back. You start getting this. claustrophobic? It was, well, because it was like cutting off the circulation on my wrist. And, and then I go up to a bartender and I was like, dude, do you have Your any. Your hand s-? is black. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was really bad. And like, I was like, do you have any scissors or anything like that? And he goes, yeah, look, I got you. And then he like, try, he like is pretty drunk, I could tell. As That's like, who you want with scissors. I know, and he's like, "Don't worry, I'm a watch guy." Uh, <laughs> what does that mean? And then he takes the scissors, and I'm like, "Dude, I got this. I'm not letting you under anywhere near." Yeah, yeah. And so then I just like ripped it off, and so I'm back with this guy. I know? like it. I think it's chill. Yeah, it's uh, pretty simple. I literally the same thing. I just want to time my sets. I'm like, I feel naked without a watch. Yeah, I used to have like a phone on stage watching the time. Yeah, there's something about like having. You're like just having my phone to look at the time looks unprofessional. Yeah, like yeah. it looks like I'm also looking at Instagram while mid set. Yeah, yeah. I at my last job, I would get in trouble with my boss all the time because she would say something and I'd open my phone to take a note on mm. it, and she's like, "Get off your phone." I'm like, "No, I'm do I'm being professional right now. Actually, uh, wow. I didn't want to write because it hurt my little wrist." The the, the sucking up backfired. Huh? <laughs> It did a really bad Let job. Let me just take a note on this. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you're actually the worst employee I've ever She's had. She's like, I, I know you're actually, I know what you're doing, but it's actually kind of pissing me <laughs> off. <laughs> what do uh, you do again? Are you? M- as a job? Yeah. Oh, this is a great question. So I used to work in nonprofit for like eight, nine years, and now I work at a company that sells software to nonprofits. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. I'm an implementation manager. Ah, okay. My. So you're like... You help onboard people? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just learned what this is. This is what my girlfriend does. Oh, I, really? I didn't know what she did for a year. I just figured out. I just found <laughs> you out. You just put the pieces together? Yeah, people used to ask me, like, what does she do? And I'm like, uh, she's an IT. Yeah, <laughs> something along those lines. And somebody's like, what the, so what, does she, like, help you with Excel sheets? And I was like, I don't know, to be honest. We're, Apparently, it's more than that. So. It's more than that. Yeah, yeah, it's just, especially in nonprofit, like, people who are buying the software we use, have been using Excel sheets for like 45 years and they're 68 years old. So you literally have to walk them through every step of nice. like, okay, you click here to change your profile picture. And they're like, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fun. It's a good time. Nice, man. So you're you're on the implementation side. Before you were working for a nonprofit, were you just fucking around? What were you doing there? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, was, I was doing nonprofit stuff, but I was like, um, I was doing like customer service at the nonprofit, or I was running their database at the nonprofit. Okay. Nice. So I was always like either I was never doing fundraising because that mm. seems tough. Yeah. To call someone and be like, 
please. Yeah. The children. That's a it's a brutal. Honestly, any sort of cold calling, but especially when it's for like donations, seems pretty brutal. We I worked at a place that did sales that then transitioned into donations only, and that was one of the things that they like the coach taught us. He was like, "You will never, rarely will you get a sale ever on a call. You will literally never get a donation on a call." Oh, it so it's like a follow up thing. Yeah, so yeah, it's like yeah. you just you you guilt people. And that's what you do. Yeah. But then you rec. Then you're like, and then donate online or yeah, whatever. But see, no one will ever give you a donation on the phone. That's funny, dude. Actually, so I used to work at a cold call center, and I did not pay attention. We did like a whole <laughs> onboarding, uh, you know, two weeks. I'm super ADHD or ADD. Uh-huh. Could not pay attention. I had no idea what was going on. And then they threw us on the phones. And figure it out. It sell was, some shit. Yeah, and like most people had listened and knew what was happening. First call, I ended up making a sale on the first. Yeah, it was it's just some contract, some tree guy in Idaho. <laughs> what were you selling? Uh, lead software. Lead software? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to like, a tree guy. Yeah, and I was like, it's kind of what we just talked about earlier about shows. I was like, cool. I guess this is pretty easy. This is actually <laughs> the easiest thing I've ever done. <laughs> and then, yeah, dude, it's such a brutal. Honestly, cold call is the most brutal thing ever. I, when I was doing sales, um, yeah, it was like you have to call 50, 50 people a day every day. Mm-hmm. And I was yeah. doing that. And, yeah, like I was the first one, like the the person to sell the biggest package the soonest after starting working there and like wow russell's an incredible salesman i just got extremely lucky and then there was all this pressure of like you're the new hot yeah, shot i'm like no i actually feel prodigy. i feel really bad about that and i don't like it at all sorry brother i didn't hear what he said yeah, neither did i <laughs> it's a little uh cap hill uh taste of cap hill this is is very exciting to, to be in Denver and to be in front of a vegan restaurant next to an apothecary across the street from a Planned Parenthood. And if, yeah, this all, is all owned. This is all owned by the same people too. It's just like a, apothecary. Yeah, the Planned Parenthood, uh, not owned by the same people, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure they support it. Uh, yeah, this, this is this is very Denver. This is a really funny part of town. Well, I don't, maybe funny is not the right word. It's like. Uh, <laughs> It's it's definitely some uh, what do you call it intersectionality. Sure. Like, yeah. The bathroom, all gender bathroom. All gender bathroom. Yeah. The bathroom had a uh, a poster for like a 9/11 kink show. <laughs> I'm like, wow, wow, we're in the heart of it all. <laughs> we're in the heart of Denver, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, we're not in the Springs anymore. <laughs> I know. It's scary. <laughs> I haven't seen one church. Yeah. Uh, get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Uh, I remember when you you came and did Pike's Punk's comedy show. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. That's the plug. Best uh, Colorado Springs show. Well, it was probably the best. You were probably on one of the best ones we've ever had. That was had. fun, yeah. Uh, that was like a fiery hot start right away. Like, dude, it was it was so good. But it was me and then Ben Daly and then you. Mm-hmm. And me and Ben Daly look like like camp counselor youth mm-hmm. pastors. And you just look like the coolest camp uh, counselor yeah, youth yeah, pastor. Yeah. You look like the one who's like, also trying to sleep with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. like, hey, who knows? This, this. <laughs> <laughs> After the three of us in a row, I'm like, guys, I promise. Yeah. I promise this isn't the whole The whole show is not just guys. Who then you just bring up Jose. And it's like, all right. There little, we go. Uh, yeah. He looks, yeah. he, no one should trust him around camp children. That was fun. I actually watched <laughs> the video from that set recently. And did I, you? I think that's how you brought me up. You like, uh, oh, did I looks, say that already? Like Great. You, I'm doing my own jokes again. Well, no, I mean, it, I mean, it's not like a bit you've worked out. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, dude, I think the Springs is a fun place to do comedy just for that reason. Because I can connect with people who grew up in a religious background. Yeah. And, you know. Did you grow up oh, Christian? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I grew up in a family where um my mom took us to this like kind of a wild like evangelical church okay my dad didn't give a fuck he, uh, he kind of <laughs> did not go he just kind of hung us out to dry as you yeah. like say <laughs> um that's so my dad f- so phoned it like he was like into church but he would come 20 minutes after church started uh-huh. that way he wouldn't have to sing songs Leave ten minutes early. That way, he wouldn't have to say hi or meet anyone. <laughs> Literally, like just go pull came. the car out from behind. Yes. The, yeah, <laughs> and he wouldn't come like with us and then take me and my brother with him. Yeah, no, we had to go with my mom early, and then we had to stay with my mom late. Yeah, uh, but and then dad your mom just was fucking chatting everybody up. Dad just yeah. came and left, and we're like, "Take us with you, brother. Yeah, what yeah. are you doing?" I didn't realize you grew. Up, I thought you were Jewish. So, 
Bloodline, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, we got you, huh? Yeah. Yeah, nice. I've been, I, I was not raised in like a religious Jewish household. Uh, I see, I see. I was yeah, raised yeah. Christian. Um, but yeah, we, f- we honestly, my mom, we didn't, my mom only has her mom, and uh-huh. that's it. So she didn't know like who her dad was, who her family origin was. She didn't know anything. So it, was, it wasn't until later in life that she found out like, oh, we're like, like we are Sephardic Jews oh, from the I tribe see, of yeah. Levi, and yeah, yeah. they fled from the Holocaust and all these things. But she just knew like her grandma had a French accent. And oh, she's I like, see. I think we're French, uh, but it's because grandma was from Morocco because they lived in Spain as Jews. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm Jew by blood. But that makes sense. Okay, that makes because I I've heard. Yeah, no, you, I've I'm heard, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. No, I, I just I've heard your bit. I was like, dude, this guy belongs at like. It, I knew you were like in a Christian church at some point. So Christian. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I'm into it. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Were you, did you grow up in the Springs? Or? Yeah. Okay. Nice. I was born and raised there. I'm one of like nine people who was born and raised in the Springs. Oh, in in life. Yeah, Everyone yeah. moves there. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That's I a, that's a weird thing to think about too, because my like, I don't know anyone i guess i've never lived in the springs why would you yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like it's to me i never think of the spring like oh everybody moving to the springs you know oh it's crazy yeah. yeah i remember when i was when i was growing up it was like i'm probably exaggerating a little bit but i remember the springs it was like oh like two or three hundred thousand people and now it's like seven hundred and fifty thousand people or something like that now yeah, yeah, yeah. it's crazy I guess it's also like a lot of people. I mean, it is a big city. I always forget that. Yeah, it, it's it's secretly huge. Yeah. I was just in um, Tulsa for mm-hmm. a festival. Oh yeah, how was that? It was great. I spent way too much money. That's how it goes. For one seven-minute unpaid set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Blew yeah. hundreds of dollars. Yeah, yeah. Absolute nightmare. Was that your first fest? Or? It was my first festival that mattered. Yeah. Okay. I've done like the Four Corners Comedy Festival, which doesn't exist anymore. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like I heard that. That. Yeah, 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 I've yeah, done yeah. I've done those. I've done every Colorado festival that doesn't matter. Like the the there's like a Colorado Springs one coming up, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so their their second time doing it. Um, but yeah, so uh, uh, I was in Tulsa, and their downtown looks like Denver, mm-hmm. but they have like I don't know. 250, 300,000 people who, like, they have... Half- nobody kept moving there. Like, whereas Denver was probably the same thing as Tulsa at one point. Yeah, and but people just kept coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Tulsa looks like they got skyscrapers and big buildings, but, like, I was scootering around downtown, and it was a ghost town. Yeah. No one was there. Whereas the Springs has, like, three times the population. But, of Tulsa? Yeah. Oh, wow. But it's, like, all of our buildings are... You're not allowed to build over a certain height, so it keeps everything looking like, oh, this is just a small town. Yeah, yeah. It's just long. Yeah. It's a long town. Was the set good? Did you have a was it worth it? Going it out was there? good. Yeah. It was good. I don't think it was like, oh my God, I absolutely brought that it wasn't seven hundred dollars good. I'll yeah. tell you that. <laughs> it was like it was like three hundred dollars yeah, good. It, it wasn't was seven hundred dollars. It was called good. was it Blue Whale? Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, dude, that's how fast go. I would say like if you had an audience at the fest? Yeah. At uh, your show? Yes. Yeah. It's like you know. 140 people, which is pretty oh, cool. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. 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 But man, I I uh um going there, I I'm great. I'm fine. I feel like at just like conversation. We're chit-chatting, we're hanging out. But if I didn't know you and you were on a show and I was on a show, I would never come up and say hello to you. Uh, okay, I don't yeah, yeah. introduce myself to yeah, anyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For, I don't know what the anxiety is. So at that festival, I'm just standing around alone by myself. Yeah, no one else yeah, from yeah. Colorado was on it. Yeah. So it was just me being sad and alone for three days, nice, calculating nice. how much money I'm spending. Nice. Yeah. I just, so I just went to the main comedy festival yeah. last weekend. And I was with Jared Chandler, uh, another Denver comic. And honestly, that was like my third fest out of state. And having a, a buddy there was like so nice to yeah. like go meet people kind of together and do you have someone to like bounce off of if things are uncomfortable totally and we're, we're both like a little more introverted as well so we're like um just being able to like hang with people and then be like dude let's get out of here uh, yeah yeah dude i was just i was today i was on a meeting with a client and i was passing them off to their account owner or whatever and uh the gal she was like I said something like, yeah, so since you guys are all done with your implementation, you're not going to see my bright, smiling, shining face anymore, whatever, some dumb line. 
And their account owner went, by the way, did you guys know Russell does stand-up comedy? <laughs> it's like, don't tell the clients. Yeah. It was fine then, but I don't want clients to know because then, like, what if they look me up yeah, and they don't yeah. like my jokes and now our work relationship is yeah, weird. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but the gal was like, oh, my cousin actually, uh, that's really interesting. My cousin runs a comedy festival. Oh, nice. And I was like, oh, what's the comedy? She's like, have you heard of the Rogue Island comedy? Like, is that the one you just did? Or? Yeah, uh, no, that that's the one in Maine. Um I don't think the one you, but the there's, um, or is it in Rhode Island? Oh, it's in Rhode Island. Oh, duh, okay, idiot. Yeah, yeah. Rogue Island Comedy Festival. Uh, okay. And I was like, oh, yeah, I've applied to that one before, actually. And she's like, oh, yeah, my cousin runs it. My sister actually lives with him right now. If you want, I could reach out to him for you. And I'm like, i got to start telling clients I do stand-up. Yeah, start nice. getting gigs Look around that. the yeah, country. Yeah. As I'm sure that lady's uh, got quite the, the pull I'm on I'm sure that with her cousin. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guess what? I am an implementations guy. <laughs> That's that, uh, the thing. It's like uh, sometimes my, my mom was like, my mom has a half-sister uh-huh. she found later in life. Half-sister. Uh, and her, she, half-sister, is the personal assistant to Rob Lowe's wife. Oh, nice. And my mom was like, you should reach out to Rob Lowe and try and, and I'm like, first of all, Rob Lowe's not like a stand-up comic. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. just an actor. He's just a uh, famous guy. But yeah. also, what do you want me to say? <laughs> do you want me to DM Rob Lowe and be like, hey, man, your wife's personal assistant is my mom's half-sister. <laughs> Can you hook me up in Los Angeles? Dude, that, and that shit gets so old, too. Like, I remember when I was, like, right out of college, my dad worked with somebody Worked with somebody whose wife worked at Pixar. And okay. He was, like, I was, he was like, you should apply for this internship and then say you know this lady, who I don't know. <laughs> don't know her at all. And she, like, was graceful enough to, like, give me an email. Like, all right, email your application. And then, like, two days later, I was like, sorry. It's like, yeah, of course. <laughs> Why like, would they? Yeah, it's like, we have no relationship. <laughs> I She has no idea who I am. What would you have done at Pixar? Uh, be an intern, you know. What do you have skills? No. Oh, no, okay. No. I like. <laughs> Are you into animation? I had like basic video editing. Like I had like a, a certificate of Adobe Premiere. Oh, like, very 2013, nice. Very you know, good. <laughs> with like no practical skills. Of course. <laughs> I remember. Yeah, when I graduated from college, I had a communication degree with like a minor in digital filmmaking. Okay. And it was literally just, I didn't want to take statistics. Yeah, and that yeah, was yeah. the one degree track. So I'm like, I guess I do film stuff now. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. never benefited me once. Yeah. But I remember applying to so many like, you know, YouTube channels to be like, I'll be your editor. Yeah, I'll move yeah. to Los Angeles. Why? Well, I just graduated with a minor in yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> digital filmmaking. So obviously, you're gonna hire me, right? Yeah, yeah, dude, it's so brutal. And like, unless you have actual any sort of experience and it in, and yes. yeah, there's no way. When I got the job I have now, I before I got the job I had now, I for a year and a half was applying to jobs. I probably applied to hundreds of places because I just hated my last position so much. Um, yeah, and it took me a year and a half to find a job. Is brutal. Yeah. You'll never just yeah. like, well, I'm just going to put in an app for this internship at Pixar. Yeah, they're definitely going to pick you and yeah. not like the CEO's niece or something. Yeah, or somebody with just like a real uh, applicable skills, you know. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. someone who's actually done something before. Uh, yeah, some sort of, I don't know. That's like when you're first applying to jobs, too. Like, I don't know, maybe this isn't relatable, but I feel like <laughs> you start to apply, to like, all right, all right, cool, I'll apply to. Netflix or YouTube, yeah, all these like crazy. What are the biggest names I could possibly get? You just I can have definitely no work idea there. what like jobs are out there. Yes, and then you don't get anything cool, and then you're like, all right, I'll do this. This this seems cool, and then you get your you just start like, yeah. working your way down. Yeah. You're like, I guess dishwasher. No, yeah. you don't want me either. <laughs> That's literally what I did right out of college. <laughs> I was just like uh, bussing tables and yep. driving Uber. I was like, this is it. I guess this is my life. You know, I I I was applying for yeah, like these giant youtube channels where i'm like oh netflix exactly needs an editor why not me yeah because they have talented people who have 30 years of experience <laughs> and <laughs> not you and they're paying like two hundred thousand dollars and i'm like put I'll, my name i'll in. take it yeah <laughs> it's, it's a Check, little please. less than i wanted but yeah <laughs> actually one of my buddies uh, i always tell this story but one of my friends here graduated a film degree and he started like he is now like worked his way up to doing a lot of freelance stuff for like Netflix and cool music video edits. But like when he started, he was literally working off Craigslist doing quinceañeras at Jimin yeah. Park. Like that's was like his main source of income for a while. And I don't have that kind of gusto in me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, well, we're going to grind this out. Yeah. I'm like, 
what is the minimum I can do to not get fired is kind of my <laughs> whole thing. Um, how was how was the festival in in Maine? Uh, it was good. So same. Uh, uh, is that the one with the lobster claw? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think yeah. Jason Alexander was there last year. Yeah, I like I'd hit him up. I was like, is it worth it? And he said yes. And uh, yeah, it was like it was yeah it was expensive to get out there, um, and to stay out there and to like the shows. There were some like really good shows, and then of course like any festival, there's some shows where like there's like nobody there. They have like the main stage or two, yeah, and then yeah, it's yeah. like. Oh, cool! A four thirty p.m. show exactly. on a Wednesday. Pe- four p.m. outside, like under on a tent. weekday. People are working right now. Yeah, yeah. And you look at the crowd, and you're like, "All right, there's ten people here." And then slowly, one by one, each person in the crowd goes up on the stage, and you're like, "Oh, those were all <laughs> comedians. <laughs> These are the the boys." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was it was cool, but I will say we really played it right. Like I had a show Thursday, that was fun. Um, Friday had. The first show I did was just okay. Well, it was pretty bad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Not great, actually. It was, it was a 4 p.m. show. And then I did another show at that brewery, 6 p.m. So you got three shows. Yeah, they added okay. one. Yeah. Um, 6 p.m. And this was much better. And then we, like, hightailed it over to an open mic. And the open mic ended up being, like, one of the most fun parts of the festival. Yeah? Where it was, like... We did back-to-back mics in the same place. It was, like, in this, like, kind of, like, 180-degree, like, bar where you could go. You went inside the bar. And you know what I'm saying? Like, so, like, basically, not, like, 360 degrees, but, Uh like, people were kind of, like, 180 degrees around. Okay. Yeah. And you were, like, in – you were, like, right next to the bartender. (laughs) Uh, And it was hot. It was, like, really fun – good crowds and like a lot of comics you didn't know yeah so like also more people who haven't heard your jokes uh-huh. so it was like a fun way to just go fucking around and uh do a little bit of new stuff and do some fun like stuff that's working and oh that's cool and then the second mic was pretty awesome too and then we just stayed up and then saturday we went back to that mic thinking it would be the same as the night before and then it was kind of lost like, its luster yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, like all these people Showed up, and we're all just like, oh, man, we really thought it was going to be like last night, you know? <laughs> you are yeah. hoping lightning would strike twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that, I kind of just assumed it would be like that again. And I was yeah. like, you walk in, somebody's bombing. You're like, oh, this is an open all mic. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is just a regular open yeah, mic again. Yeah. But I yeah. did the um, the last year they did it. I did the – I've been a lot of Colorado festivals. The uh-huh. last time they do it. Interesting. <laughs> but the last Brunchen. time they did the four cor- – not the four corners – the the chief comedy festival down in Trinidad. Oh, okay. Uh, I heard I heard that. Well, you tell. Yeah. No, you. <laughs> I just I heard it and I heard it blew up. Yeah, it was, no. it was wild. <laughs> um, a um, uh, they had an open mic in the middle of the day there, and I'm like, I have nothing better going on. I'll go check out the open mic, and it's empty, and it's Jose McCall and Dana McTavish hosting the open mic. And it's just the two of them kind of talking to each other because, like, (laughs) they're, I don't know, contractually obligated to be there. But no one is at this open mic. No comics. No. no, Yeah. Nobody. So they were there, and then they saw me, and they're like, hey, Russell. And I'm like, well, now I guess I'm in the (laughs) open mic. So then it just became the three of us. Like, we all sat down, but we just kept the microphones, and we just chit-chatted. For like an hour, nice. it was really nice. Dude, that's an hour of stage time. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And then like the owner, it was like Mutiny Cafe down in Trinidad. Yeah. The owner and his wife just like sat down and listened to us chit chat. Nice. I'm like, this is the best open mic I've ever had in my life. Yeah. Just a lovely conversation. That's what an open mic should be. Honestly, at least there was like nobody watched. Well, I guess there was the I don't know one Somet- guy. Yeah, at least there's sometimes an open mic can be so low stakes that it actually is kind of nice. But yes. I used to when I first started going to the Mutiny Information Cafe mic was the most terrifying thing ever <laughs> because it was no audience members yeah. and like four comics that were like I thought the world of <laughs> and like, you go out there and you like be doing like just the worst bits and like just eating shit for five straight minutes with not a single laugh you know <laughs> that was like small that was like that's like what really tests you uh-huh. you know like oh god I'm bombing in front of Michael Isaacs yeah, no way yeah, 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 right, yeah. <laughs> Like all these people, like, and then you could just see, like, kind of the disgust on people's face. Like, who is this asshole? You know, yeah. I, uh, when did, when did you start doing stand up? Uh, I f- did my first mic in like 2016, but I really honestly didn't start doing it hardcore until like three years ago. Okay, so, yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I think every, a lot of people have done that. I think I did an open mic one time 
in like 2017. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then every in, in Colorado Springs, and everyone was mean. Yeah. And then in like 2019, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna try it one more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I remember when I first started, I was like, I don't know, six months in, something like that. Like right before it was like January of 2020, something like that. And a comic in the Springs was like, hey man, why don't you? Nice. <laughs> why don't you? drive me up to denver and i'll introduce you to everybody uh-huh. up in up in the scene up in there yeah, yeah, so i'm yeah. like okay that sounds good and early on in my in my stand-up career i was just the guy who didn't drink uh-huh. so every comic was like i started getting booked on so many shows so early just because people knew i would drive them home nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> which, yeah, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. a sick move yeah, yeah, yeah. um but yeah so i drove this guy up to denver so that he could see his girlfriend <laughs> And then he abandoned me and would just, like, leave me alone for, like, an hour and a half. And Didn't then come do the back. show? Or? He would do, like, he would do his set. But, like, you know, Denver open mics were just so crowded. And oh, I was so it new. Was a mic. He see, would, yeah. like, yeah. So he would, like, they would pair up. They would disappear. I wouldn't see anybody for an hour and a half. And then he'd come back. He's like, all right, now we're going to mutiny. Nice. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. And I just did, like, in the same night, three open mics. Bombed every single one of them. I'm six months in, and I'm like, oh, all these people know who I am now. And that's yeah, the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In my head, I'm like, they all remember my face. Yeah. They all know who I am, and they'll remember I suck forever. Yeah. And I'm sure not a one person remembers that. But also, I bet there's one. I bet, like, Nick Dean or something like that was like, the next time he saw me, he's like, isn't that the guy who that's bombed at all those open mics? <laughs> like, How dare he? <laughs> it's definitely not everyone remembers, but I doubt nobody I remembers. I'm sure know. one guy is like, I've seen you before. I've I, seen you be bad. I can't tell you how many times somebody has like, come up to me. They're like, and, uh, like, I don't know them. I'll introduce myself. They're like, oh, I've seen you around. And then they do a bit. And then I'm like, then it jogs my memory. Yeah. Right? Like, but I feel like, to be honest, most people don't remember your shit, especially like early on. <laughs> yes. I do. We were on uh, Rogers' uh, Funny Final Four. Yep. We're the Two you, times. me, and George Delgado. Yeah. <laughs> we're yeah. the legacy. No one picked us, guys. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's funny about that was like the first time I ever did New Talent Night. Roger came up to me and like we're meeting for the first time, and he's just like that was fucking awesome. Good, like good shit. Blah blah blah, etc. And I had never told him this, but like I had actually gone to, when he was hosting Lions Lair, uh-huh. I think maybe like twenty eighteen, a friend of mine was like, Go to Lions Lair, it's an awesome mic and I went up there and I was I bombed and I ran the I didn't know what a light, a light was, was. <laughs> and he's fucking lighting me and I remember he was so pissed off and then I left and didn't do like a mic for years after that, right? And it was just so funny to have that experience and be like, oh, man, he does not remember that the last time we actually have met and he fucking. But you'll remember it. that forever. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was my the first mic I did in 2017. It was um, John Rummery, who I don't know if you know, uh, but John Rummery. It was like a mic at this place called Gold Camp Brewery and him and the other, co- you know, four Colorado Springs comedians that existed at the time were uh not nice they were very clicky and not yeah, kind yeah. to me and then the first time i did like a my like okay 2019 i think i did the loonies open mic okay and then john like rummery yeah. came up to me afterwards he's like hey man that was really good is this your first time and i'm like you don't remember yeah, you yeah, were yeah. mean to <laughs> me <laughs> two <laughs> years ago <laughs> <That's> <laughs> ever, everyone's just being insecure <laughs> it'll everybody's. be burned in my memory yeah. forever dude that was like a we- i remember that's why i didn't keep going because i felt like people were assholes yeah but that's also just what it's like to start comedy right yeah people are going to be mean to you people are going to be it's like it should be kind of hard it's sh- like i'm all for being supportive i'm all for being nice but for it should sure. not be like a layup you know i i totally agree i think when i first started uh Two comic. It was John Rummery and Brian Sullivan were outside of an open mic, and they were yell arguing at each other on whether or not we should be supportive of the new guys. And you know, I'm four months in, so yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm a part of this crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, whether we should be supportive of the new guys or if we should be harsh to them, <laughs> because you want to be supportive to the new guys. Because what if that's the next Dave Chappelle, and yeah, you were yeah. just mean to him, yeah, and so yeah. now he he'll never do stand up comedy again. But he could have gone great. The other guy was like, no, you have to be mean because you need an edge. You need to be yeah, tough yeah, in order to yeah. make in this business. And 
I don't necessarily agree either way. Like, we should be mean to people or we should ha- we have to be nice to all the new people because what if they were going to yeah, be good? Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, I started stand-up. Uh, I had never seen marijuana in my life, nice, much less nice. guys just doing crack. <laughs> <laughs> like, That's the Springs, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd never seen pot in my life before. I had never really heard swear, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And then... I don't I don't drink, I don't do drugs. Everyone was bullied me and then also took advantage of me to like <laughs> they were mean to me but also made me DD them everywhere. And I'm like if I soft dough boy little Russell like from a naive Christian household can make it then anyone else if you c- yeah, if you're not yeah. tough enough you're actually not tough yeah, enough. Yeah. <laughs> like but maybe it's also that you're so like nice and that's like your you know people are like kind of like, people are probably mean to you, but there's, like, a uh, kind of, like... <laughs> a camaraderie to yeah, it. Yeah, I don't know. It's not, like, too harsh, right? Because <laughs> there are, like, some people that, like, also actually do have an edge. Yes. You know, I, I, there's a few people that come to mind. They have an edge. They come from, like, uh, you know, I got to... It's me against the world. Yeah. And so then they're assholes, and then they really get it, like, from <laughs> other people, you know? I don't know. I think that, like, everybody probably has a different experience with it. I, I don't know. You should be nice to people, right? Uh, you should. But, I'm not saying being me to any of the new people. Yeah, but also you don't want to be like, oh, amazing, you know, like every every Instagram story is someone going, look at so and so, absolutely destroying yeah, at this open yeah, mic, yeah. and I'm like, I've seen them before. I promise you, they've never destroyed yeah, yeah. anything. <laughs> I, 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 that's too much support for me. I yeah, don't like yeah, it. Yeah, it's yeah, too yeah, much yeah, love. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. needs to be a little bit. You did okay. Yeah. Need, let's be reasonable <laughs> with everybody's comedy career. There also needs to be like a new system on how we like vouch for people because I feel like the vouch thing is like binary. Like, uh, yes, I vouch for them or I don't vouch for them. But there should be like kind of like a maybe even a code word or whatever. Like, yeah, this person, like I vouch for them in like this amount. You know, <laughs> they'll do fine. They're or, a B minus. Yeah, they could do, do a guest spot or something like that. <laughs> But I've had people who are like, oh, yeah, bring, put them on the show, and then you get them on the show, and you're like, all right, that was, uh, that was wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I was like, well, that was interesting, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I recently wrote for some, some comic was, like, looking for Springs comedians, and they just put it in, like, the Colorado Springs Comedy Facebook group. Yeah, yeah. And I messaged them directly, and I said, never do that. There's a bunch of swamp creatures a bunch of soft brains <laughs> you don't want all these people reaching out to you and going oh can i have that spot oh they were asking for they're uh, like yeah does anyone want to do 10 minutes uh, i see i see and yeah. i was like never never do that you're gonna yeah. get absolute psychos yeah. so i wrote up a word document on like okay here's who i recommend here's who has been around for a long time so they can fill the time but it's not gonna be the best thing you've ever seen in your life very b minus Here's a section of people who have a good five minutes. I wouldn't give them more than that. Yeah, Here's yeah, a yeah. Se- like I literally wrote out a whole document of nice. springs people to be aware of, and here was where I that's, ranked dude, them. That's what we need. We that, need that's like a better guidance, you know. This is my A plus. I would bet my life on them vouches, but also here are vouches. That's like, if you need 15 minutes filled, they have 15 yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah. They will. If you're in a pinch, use them. They will do fine. Do fine. They're not gonna don't tell special anytime soon, yeah, but they'll yeah, fill the yeah, time yeah, amicably. Yeah. Nice. That's very important distinction. Yeah. With a vouch. Yeah. Also, you know, vouches are always like, I totally vouch for this guy. It's like that's just because you four all book each other yeah, on each yeah, other's yeah, shows. Yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. like I vouch for him, and it gets nine likes. It's like that's just because you're all friends. Yeah. <laughs> None of you are actually talented. Dude, that was actually, I'll say this, uh, one of the most helpful things ever for me in the beginning of stand-up was that I had no friends when <laughs> I first started. Like, And honestly, That's good. it sounds sad, but like, w- I mean, I have friends outside of comedy, uh-huh. uh, but like within, com- I, I would say like, even just like, yeah, like a year into it, I was like not close with anyone, yes. but, which helped me because then I'd be at Mike's. And I wouldn't get any sort of cheap laughter on jokes. You had to earn it. Yeah. Yeah. And I probably wasn't even getting it from the comics no matter what. But like, For sure. You know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, it like, it, because sometimes I think that can be kind of poisonous. It's like, oh, we're all going to, or we're like laughing very hard at our friend's joke. And yes. it's for the back of the room, but none of the audience is laughing. And then you're like kind of twisted on what you think is going to work at a, a uh-huh. show, you know? That's, a, I think that's a very good point. That is like, um, when you're doing, um, I, when I was in Tulsa, there's one of the headliner comedians who I didn't think was the best I've ever seen. 
but people were like in hysterics laughing at them. Was it uh, Asmus or no? He uh, was yeah. he was Jeff Osmus, and I've said this before, since since I've seen this was maybe a top five set I've ever seen in my Fuck life. Yeah, it was insane. He headlined the festival, right? Yes. Yeah, 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 he yeah. was he was crazy. He yeah. was incredible. Cool. Um, but there are some people where it's like you just get to a point where you have fans. Yeah. And people yeah. are just there to laugh at what you have to say, yeah. regardless of if it's good or not. Whereas if you're at like you know, a middling level, like Jeffrey Osmus is very funny, but I doubt ninety percent of people know who he is. Yeah. They're we going, know who he is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But they're buying tickets to a comedy club because it's like, what is there to do this weekend? We yeah. could buy tickets to a comedy show. They go see him. And you actually like people you actually have to make them really like you. It's not like yeah. well, these are three hundred very clearly Russell Keller fans. Yeah, 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 it doesn't yeah. matter what I say, they're gonna love me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time I get laughs it's because people went like, Oh, he's actually not as bad as I thought he yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's dude, that's interesting. Well, I didn't really, I kinda assumed that Osmus was like uh I don't know, maybe I just you know, he's on Instagram everywhere. I feel like he has a following. Well, it's like one of those, I think I could be wrong, not to disparage a man's Instagram followers, but I think it's like, you know, 300, 300,000, that kind of thing. It's not 2.5 million. True, but that's Co- a lot. That's a still, lot of people. Yeah. still a lot. Um, yeah, I need to I need to work on that. It would be nice to no, have. Oh, the Instagram thing? Yeah, I was talking to someone recently, and they're like, yeah, I'm trying to, like, I p- keep submitting my tape to other clubs around the country. Uh-huh. And they're like, yeah, unless you have 500,000 followers, we won't we won't book you to host the show. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I got, I have sub 1,000 yeah, <laughs> comfortably. Yeah, yeah. She's like my friends. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's like my community of people online. It's yeah. friends and people who I've booked on shows before. Yeah, yeah. Good. That's it. Yeah, that's you, you'll get that producer bump. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Every- uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't think he'd, he can focus on it. I don't know. It's just like a sad world. Like, I mean, <laughs> it is. I like the world. I, I just, I like, I notice when I'm on my phone too much, I'm the most depressed that I'll ever be. Oh, for sure. And so I'm like, sometimes I think about this. I'm like, how can I like create more of a, you know, uh, a page? And then yeah. I think about, I'm like, I, am I contributing to a problem of like a lot of sad people? Because I don't want to just be another video that somebody wa- I've watched people you ever watch somebody just fucking scrolling through videos they're not happy they're not smiling <laughs> and yet we're like we take those views and we take those likes and those shares and all those things so we're like yes it's amazing but if you yeah. watch somebody consume a video they never look happy at it's all. exactly gambling yeah it's yeah, penny yeah. slots like yeah. wa- go to a casino <laughs> yeah. and watch people just like pulling slots and how dead in their eyes they are like that is so sad, so despicable. But as soon as you start pulling the slot, you're like, I'm having a pretty good time. Yeah. It's just like while you're doing, I, I mean, it's the same thing with if someone right now was standing in front of, look at what we're doing. This is depressing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, if I saw someone just walk up and like put their phone down and like film a TikTok real quick yeah. and then move on, I would go, that was the most cringiest thing I've ever seen yeah, in my life. Yeah. And then they have, you know, 1.2 million followers, and I go, I want 1.2 million followers. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. the only way you do that is by filming cringy TikTok and videos. It's, it's and I'm like, like daily. Yes. Right? Yeah. You just have to keep doing that. And I go, that's sad. But then I want what they have, yeah. but I don't want to put in any of the effort to get it. <laughs> do you ever, did you ever watch the Social Dilemma? Uh, is that the, the Facebook movie? Yeah, it's a movie about, like, yeah, Mark Zuckerberg? Yeah. yeah. No, 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 not that one. It's oh. about, it's like a doc that was made three or four years ago and it's like or it's like a doc but it's also got some like drama in it oh okay it's weird um but it's all about the algorithm it's like kind of like it's all the knowledge that we pretty much have now but it's just like teaching people about how the algorithm works and like how it's all kind of fueled on um people i don't know just like getting people to come back and yeah like, you know attention economy whatever you yeah know. your deep insecurities yeah. and dude i like some of my uh uh, uh you know youtube reels or whatever the one that has like the most view, like it has like hundreds of comments on it, not a ton of views, but s- s- proportionally way too many comments. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it was um, it was me and Jason Alexander, and we were just talking about, joking about how it's more fun to be like Republican problems are more funny than liberal problems because uh, okay, yeah, yeah. liberal problems are like the oceans are drying up, the ozone layer is disintegrating, we're killing our bodies with mycoplastics, and Republican problems are like, 
Do you guys hear Joe Biden shit himself? Yeah. yeah Do you yeah, know yeah. Michelle Obama's a guy? Yeah. yeah, yeah like yeah. it's very silly problems comparatively, like yeah, what yeah. you're focused on, and hundreds of comments are like, "You two dumbasses! I can't. You're so blind to what's in front of." Like hundreds of comments, a calling us stupid both ways. Yeah. yeah, R- yeah like yeah. both left and right were yeah, like, yeah, "You're yeah. the dumbest men of lives." Yeah, so yeah. everyone's not getting it, but it made a bunch of people mad. Yeah. And so then. YouTube kept putting it in front of people totally, to get yeah. more people upset. I'm like, I wish it did this with anything that was like silly or funny or like whimsical. But the one time we like talked politics a little bit. Yeah. It's okay. Outrage. Here's here's all the maddest people alive, and it kind of worked. Yeah. Algorithmically, and I'm like, should I, should I start doing that more? And then it gets in your head yeah. that little warm of like, should I start? Should I become a right wing comic? <laughs> should, should I start doing? Kamala yeah. impress impressions <laughs> on the podcast just Dude, to get that engagement up. So the show we're doing a show tonight here at the Corner B uh, tonight, September 11th. Uh, <laughs> Rest in peace. And so I post every month on the Denver Reddit. Hey, there's a show this Wednesday, Corner Beat stand up, whatever. It usually gets like fucking three thousand view or three thousand views, whatever, which sounds like a lot, but it's you know sure. Whatever. No, it's like, all bots. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's whatever. Um, but. This week I posted, I was like, hey, we got a show, uh, Stand Up Comedy Corner Beat on 9-11. And then all these comments were like, 9-11, like, I hope it's like a <laughs> theme show. And like now there's like a comment war going on between people. Most tickets I've ever sold off Reddit. <laughs> like, I swear to God, like 15 tickets sold off Reddit because it got in front of so many people's faces. I got to find this post. That yeah, sounds so yeah, fun. It's like an awesome. <laughs> but um, yeah, I guess what I was getting at earlier, too, about the, the social dilemma, one of the things about people's like algorithms is that your algorithm is so tailored to you. Yeah. You watch somebody else's. Like, you ever watch somebody scroll? Like you're on an airplane and you see like somebody else scrolling and it's like the most boring. You're like, yes. what is this bullshit? Yes. You know? Yeah. I was watching, I was sitting on a plane and we we're stuck and we we're taxing and I watched a lady scroll for 30 minutes and I couldn't take my eyes off it, but I was like, this fucking <laughs> sucks. <laughs> bullshit, bullshit yeah. derivative. Just like a lot of like, like, I, a lot like, of like makeup girls tutorials. talking. Yeah. <laughs> The worst TikToks, yeah. girls talking. Yeah. All my TikTok algorithm is like a lot of guys falling down. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of it's a lot of that. It's a lot of uh, stand up clips, uh, and then a lot of like, for some reason, I get a lot of like Vietnamese guy just going like, "Hey," <laughs> into that has like four views, yeah. and it's just also me now <laughs> watching this Vietnamese man. I get a lot of those. You're part of that. You're part of that guy's Mine gets base. Yes. I get a lot of like real niche specific stuff. And it's like, I don't know, like to your point, who the, like, who is, who is the most, who is the Instagram person with the most followers? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I would have to guess it's like a Kardashian or like a. I'm sure it's like a, an actual, maybe it is. But like, oh, you think it's like a in the influencer? Maybe, yeah. but the thing is, like, that's the most popular person on Instagram. I have no idea who it is. You don't know who yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. They might have 250 million followers. Don't know who the most popular person yeah. is, and not because I'm like an elevated being who like, oh, social media yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. But just like my algorithm, so tailored to me, I don't know anything that's outside of. Yeah. yeah. I don't know who the number one youtuber is i don't know who the number one TikToker is yeah i know my four guys with a hundred a hundred subscribers and i'm one of them and he reviews soda pops one vietnamese guy (laughs) one (laughs) vietnamese guy just like there's one it's like he just fills jars with paint (laughs) and just throws rocks at him that's on that's on tiktok it's so relaxing (laughs) it's incredible i have yet to go down the tiktok i've never experienced ai like never talked to chat gpt and i've never been on tiktok uh-huh. i've seen some tiktok videos obviously but like people send them to me and i'm like i don't know i just like don't want to get sucked in you know you shouldn't yeah. it's actually really bad <laughs> uh, <that's laughs> scary. the chat gpt i'm like now getting more curious about it but i think there's like this weird thing with me where i'm like i don't want to participate i like because i'm afraid of the joke generation and stuff like that 
So right now I'm just like, I don't want to, I, I would like to be able to say that I've never experienced it. You know? <laughs> but then you You're start a to gold see, star. Yeah. But then you start to see some of these like videos, like Harry Potter rap videos and stuff like that. You're like, that's kind of awesome. <laughs> that's actually <laughs> sick as hell. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> dude, I don't know. Just like, yeah, random stuff. Or like, honestly, my, one of my friend's algorithms is entire algorithm is just like SpongeBob characters singing. Uh, oh, like voiceover. Y- yes. Yeah. Like, uh, how to save a life by the <laughs> prey. Like, <laughs> Dude, that's all he sends me. I was like, dude, your algorithm is fucked up. <laughs> hey, I know exactly which songs you're talking about. It's like Plankton doing yeah, pop punk yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I used to play the drums before we like moved into an apartment, moved into a house, had kids, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. But for like my whole childhood, I played the drums. And I always thought in my head, if I ever did, I'm for some reason I can do stand up. I'm very embarrassed to play the drums in front of people. Uh-uh. And I always thought if I was ever going to do the talent show at my middle school, I would play "How to Save a Life" nice. by the Fray. That just was just on the drums. <laughs> just on the drums, <laughs> which like have the song play. Ah, uh, I see. I see. It, yeah, it's not just acapella <laughs> drums and people like guess which song uh, it is. So how does, is that the the Fray? <laughs> yeah. But for some reason in my head, I'm like that's the one that'll get me made out with yeah yeah because ha- it shows my skill which that song is very easy to <laughs> drum to from what i can remember but it's like it'll show my skill and it'll show girls that i have a sensitive side yeah yeah the fray yeah, and yeah. they'll go that's the hottest thing i've ever seen nice. let me make out with that chubby <laughs> that chubby 14 year old drummer do you still have like i mean do you think uh, i have like dreams that I guess I make out with fourteen-year-old girls. Well, that, that and uh, <laughs> like for me, I, I guess what I bring up is that uh, I st- still have like high school baseball dreams all the time. Yeah, like I always have dreams that like it's always stuff that haunts me from high school and like middle school. Uh, last night I had a dream that I was in my childhood house and somebody broke in and I killed a guy. <laughs> and then I, wo- I swear to God, I that's w- a great dream. I I woke up. And then I was like, well, time to go back to sleep. And then I like it hit me right in that moment that I was like, I was planning on never telling somebody about this. Like, <laughs> I feel like these types of dreams are kind of common for me, where I like some take a heinous, life. where my girlfriend should wake up and be like, I had the craziest dream, and it would be like it's something pretty mundane. Or yeah, like, I cheated on her in her dream. Uh-huh. Uh And then I'm like, man, I like have these like crazy fucked up dreams all the time, and I don't say anything about it. I choked a man to death with my bare hands. I literally slammed his <laughs> skull into the I watched the his eyes pop Yeah, out. it was fucked up, dude. <laughs> yeah, I have those dreams all the time. Do you really? Yeah, for okay, sure. Okay, yeah, yeah, all right. You're not alone. Just guy stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just bully <laughs> stuff, just taking lives. <laughs> um, but I would never, that would be like, I've been in like one fight. Like, I don't know how to fight. I've never been in a fist fight. It's yeah. all I think about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is like I'm laying in bed at night going, all right, if someone breaks into my house, how do I... How do I take his life and save my wife and daughter kind yeah, of thing? Yeah. But yeah, I have, I've had dream. I, my dreams, yeah, used to be like, oh, what if I was a transformer and I can turn into a plane and fly away? Yeah. All my dreams now are home invasion. What happens if someone breaks I into see, your well, house? You've got people to protect. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's also my wife betraying me sexually. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, I'm like having like a sexy dream and then it's like all of a sudden, She's actually an assassin, and she cuts my throat, and I die a uh, horrible death. Yeah. Or, like, I'll be, like, I'll meet a girl in a hotel room, and w- <laughs> things are getting intimate. But then it turns out my wife hired her to trick me because in my dream fantasy, I'm still married with children. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. even in my fantasy, it's like, no, she hired her to blackmail me to get all my money. So it's a lot of sex betrayal dreams. It's a lot of sh- uh, sounds like you get a lot of shame in your subconscious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, a lot of, it's a lot of taking lives. I had a dream two nights ago. I had a nightmare. Where I woke up, looked at my watch. It was 4 a.m. Uh-huh. That was my nightmare, is that I woke up too early. Oh, I see. And then yeah, I woke yeah. up and it was 5 a.m. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, nah, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. took everything from me, God. So you've never been in a fight, but you think about fighting. Yeah. yeah, yeah I'm yeah. worried about it. I uh, I have this thing. I, I actually tried to make this, uh, just a disclaimer. This was <laughs> I tried to make it a bit once, but it didn't really work. But... Um, I had a like this idea that like when I go to yoga, I do a lot. I used to teach yoga, do a lot of yoga. I'm like so at one with the people in there. I'm so nice and like I'm bowing to people, whatever. And then when I'm at the gym, I'm like constantly uh, about to get into a fight the entire time. I'm, like looking at every guy. I hate every guy in my gym. I've never talked to any of them, uh-huh. and I'm just seeing all these guys. And I'm gl- we're glaring at each other, and I'm like constantly having these conversations that have never happened. 
and I'm constantly like, I'm about to fucking, I hate that guy. I'm about to fight that guy. <laughs> All the things like he bumps into me, and then I say, hey, man, watch it. Yeah. And he says, where you think you're going, tiny? And I say, tiny? Who's tiny? Yeah, <laughs> like that yeah, kind yeah. of thing. And then I know how to fight. All of a sudden. <laughs> All yeah. of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. It's always it's, 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 it's guys too are like kind of hovering around. We there's one bench at my gym, so there's it's like a hot commodity. So you're on that bench, and then I'm constantly the whole time thinking like oh, I'm taking my time on this. You know, <laughs> no one's gonna push this me. This is out. my bench. Yeah, and I'm like I'm gonna take my time in between reps, and but then I catch eye with a guy, and he's probably just. Staring off into space, I'm like, dude, this guy, like, this guy's got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> You're so pumped full of testosterone. Yeah, but it's why it's all just insecurity floating. Yeah, of you. course. Yeah. I uh uh, kind of that, but like going back to algorithm stuff, I had like a cool, I had a cool, I did like five minutes for Mark Normand on a secret show. Oh yeah, how very was cool. that? Yeah, yeah. It was very cool. I Great. saw you guys do that show got pimped out for like a month before <laughs> like hey, secret show a secret guest yeah exactly and everyone knew who it was yeah. but for some reason we're not allowed to say it um, but I uh, I got to do five minutes very cool but literally the next day I was looking at Instagram being upset seeing other people on other shows uh-huh. and like god damn it I didn't get the open who why did not no one ask me to be on yeah, this yeah, <laughs> why didn't no yeah, one ask yeah, me yeah. to be on this girls only comedy show what <laughs> the hell it's just instantly no matter how good it is for me I'm mad at everybody else yeah you got to do a show with Mark Norman that's fucking awesome yeah ever I ever no everyone else yeah. is taking opportunities for me and I'm still upset about it yeah it's crazy how quick it gets into you that high lasted an hour and a half before yeah. I was looking at Instagram going like, these people are actually taking from me and I deserve that instead. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I should have everything. Such a baby. I think also, I, what I, yeah, I just said this on a podcast like two days ago. Um, I do a lot of podcasts. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You're a <laughs> commodity. Yeah. Um, no, but I said that, I, I think that like we all have these initial reactions. Like you might see things, people getting certain things or whatever. And like, I don't think there's anything wrong with like being like, oh man, like, Poor me for like whatever, however amount of time you want to do that. I think it's just all about how you act like going forward. Yeah. Are you, are you gonna actually be that asshole and like not be supportive of people, or are you gonna just like be like, all right, I'm sad for myself for whatever ten minutes, and then now I'm stoked for my friends. You know? <laughs> I'm I'm only happy for people who are also on the Cinderella team. Yeah, Anybody okay, who's yeah, on the yeah, Cinderella yeah, team who gets something like good for you. Yeah, yeah, Cinderella. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny too is like we act like we're like so like forgotten about it. It's just cool to get to do that show anyway. Yeah, you know? exactly. I will say two years ago the show was really fun. This year I got there I was like it's going to be a ripping show and then you get there and there's like three aisles filled you're like ah oh, fuck. Like, it wasn't it wasn't as good. Yeah. <laughs> dude, that's how, dude that's how everything is. You do an awesome show you have an expectation of what it's going to be like. That's why, like, the fun shows, you, n- you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. I I do my worst sets when I have confidence. Yeah, right. Anytime yeah. I'm, like, I'm about to show these amateurs how it's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will I'm going to riff up top for three <laughs> minutes. <laughs> yeah. yes, oh, dude, I, I did a show in Germany recently. Yeah, Whoa. Like, uh, yeah. I'm mad at you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I did two shows. It wasn't like I was on vacation. It was like, can I get on your show? Yeah. I, you know, I wasn't like booked to be out there. Um, but I like had a good set the first night and then I went to Cosmic Comedy Club. Shout out. Awesome club. Um, and I was like, all right, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to, because the night before everyone was doing like Berlin specific humor, like Berlin be like, you, know, like, <laughs> you have no reference for yeah, And everybody's like, oh, laughing really hard. And then I was like, all right, I'll, let me do some of that. You know, <laughs> I've been here for three days. So I like, get it. Yeah. And I go out there and just like, you know, when you're trying to riff and you have this like kind of thing you think you're going to say, and I'm just like stumbling over my yeah. words for, th- it took me three minutes to get into the rhythm of this seven minutes set. <laughs> And I was like, I shouldn't have. I should have just gone out there and told jokes, you know. You get you get so confident. It's it's, I, it takes your legs out from as soon as you like. <laughs> yeah. If you don't correct it right away, it is like what you know. What is it called? A uh, uh, speed wobble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just starts. You start. <laughs> <laughs> it's the uh, rhythm. It's, uh, a, it's uh, the uh, rhythm, <laughs> and I think it's even like less to do. It's like has to do with your talking. But it's also to do with just like the rhythm of everything, like space and time, if that makes any sort of sense. You know, <laughs> the universe. Like, yeah, where it's just like everything feels off. Uh-huh. You know, the way you're moving, the way you're talking, and you're like, oh, I'm just, I don't have it right now. And I may, maybe I need to just like stop for a second and like <laughs> let everything catch up. Yeah. You know? How many times I, so 
my some of my favorite shows are when it is like like you said very low stakes. Yeah. I can kind of just do whatever I want. Who cares? No one who's going to be here is going to remember this. Or I'm not trying to impress anyone. Yeah, here. There's yeah, no yeah. bookers at this show or anything. Yeah. But I did. Uh, um, there was. I did a show in Golden like three weeks ago. Oh, Jeremy's show? Uh, no, it was um, it was Dana McTavish, oh, okay. her show. Yeah. Um, and wow. I'd never say I kill. I have a very specific in yeah, my mind. Yeah, yeah. I did a very, very good job, though. I was very happy with it. The next night, very low stakes show at a place in Colorado Springs. I'm like, all right, who cares? I'm not trying to impress anybody here. I'm going to do some new stuff. I'm yeah, going to riff yeah. up top. I did all that. And it was f- 15 minutes, a painful silence. Yeah. And at one point, there's just a table of black women, just three black ladies in the middle. And she just started going, what are you talking about? <laughs> what? That is. What? Yeah, like, I, I'll literally never recover from this. That's the one table you want, you want on your side. <laughs> if yeah, I can yeah, get yeah, you, yeah, I can yeah, get yeah. anybody. <laughs> no, I just like, again, show these amateurs how it's done. I'm yeah. going to riff. I'm going to do this and I that. I can crush that. Yeah. yeah. And especially like coming off the high of like, yeah. I can do whatever I want. Yeah. First joke, nobody laughs. Second joke, nobody laughs. And I'm like, okay, maybe it's like more of a crowd work kind of thing. Yeah. And I'm like, sir, what do you do for a living? He's like, I don't know. And I'm like, cool. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, like, I sometimes I'll start doing crowd work with somebody. I very rarely do crowd work, yeah, but yeah. I'll go, like, if I can tell it's not going anywhere, I'll bail and go, like, I don't do crowd work. I don't know why I'm talking to you. Yeah, I'm very yeah, sorry, yeah. sir. And that even gets a sympathy laugh. And uh, I did that where I'm like, I don't, I don't do crowd work. I don't know why I'm talking to you. Sorry about that, sir. And he was like, why are you talking to me? <laughs> I'm like, I Oh, I was just like doing a little riff thing, and he's like, "Why? You t- that's not what you're supposed to do." Yeah, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. "Don't start talking back to like I short circuited because yeah. I'm like, you're not. No, you're right. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have been doing that. So I have a daughter. <laughs> <laughs> just like lost yeah, every like elephant in the room. <laughs> yeah, just seeing a man crumble on stage is hu- my wife doesn't think stand up is impressive or fun uh-huh. or because she's like it's so." Desperate. Yeah. You're like, yeah. but look at these little jokes I wrote. Yeah, Please. Let. She's yeah. like, it's so depressing. Yeah. And I'm like, no, it's actually cool and punk rock. And then you have those moments where like, no, this actually is the saddest thing a man can do. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Please laugh at my little jokes. It, there's like, there's a, there's a many different types of bombs, but the bomb where you're like, <laughs> and then you're, you're like don't address something that somebody says and then you're like uh, and then you go in your dumb bit and you're like i this sounds so rehearsed and like ugh, yuck <laughs> uh, dude, i was doing this like i i think when i uh, was like a year ago this is actually before i went to a different festival that was like well, I'll say that for later, but uh, <laughs> I go to the Bay Area and I go to the show and I like just hit this new kind of milestone where I was like, I know how to bomb well, you know, <laughs> things aren't going well. I'm as soon as I think it, yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. when it's like, oh, you've never bombed like this yeah. before. And then, yeah, I was just like, oh, I know how to get out of a bomb. I got a few tricks up my sleeve. and <laughs> This uh, old dog's got some <laughs> new tricks. Where it's like, yeah, and I, I was bombing because I was on this show that I didn't realize didn't have a mic. And I get up there, I bite the bullet, and I get up there, I was like, wait, there's no mic. You're uh, just talking? Just talking. And I was like, I asked a question at the beginning of my set, and everybody started to talk amongst themselves to answer. And, uh, and it's not going well. And like I'm a like, discussion group. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh and I'm like, excuse God. me? Uh, <laughs> and then I was like, I had said something like a week before where a show was like not very fun, and I said something like making fun of the show and the set and whatever, and it killed it was like the best part of the set i was like i'll just say that thing again i said it and this lady just goes oh <laughs> oh uh. mister <laughs> it was so quiet and then i got off the stage and i was like oh, i'm getting the fuck out of here and then i went to a new uh do another show i was like all right this show's got a mic I shake it off and then i bombed on that show i was like all right i maybe should quit so <laughs> humbling yeah the 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 I heard like an Olympic coach one time go like, you you need to feel good a third of the time, you need to feel fine a third of the time, and you need to like eat it yeah. a third of the time. No, that I kind think of that's thing. real. Yeah. And I feel like I'm strongly in the bottom third right now. So hopefully the show goes great tonight, or else this might be it. Yeah, you know, this, this might be, be the end yeah. of it. <laughs> no, I agree though. I think you like 
that's why, that's why you go to open mics. That's why you go. That's why you try new stuff. Like, yeah. Right? Do like eat sh- eat some shit because if you don't learn how to do that, like you can't do it gracefully, right? Yeah. And then I I I I get I'll think of like a here's how we get out of this, and then I'll think about it. And on stage, I'll go like, no, there's a better way to get out of. And then I've just not said anything for 15 seconds because nice. I'm in my head talking uh, to myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh my god, I'm I'm actually bad at this. Yeah. I'm actually I'm sorry that you booked me, but I'm actually bad at stand up. Yeah, yeah. I think most of the time. Dude, in in Maine last weekend, on set, I had a couple of fun sets. I was like, I was riding high, heat check. I go into this sh- show. I had met the guy who was hosting. I met him the night before, and I was like, dude, can I jump on? He's like, I don't know. I don't know if they're letting people. And I was like, please, this person didn't show up. And he goes, Yeah, I got you. I'm and begging you I, to then I, eat shit. Yeah, and then everybody's <laughs> eating shit, and I was like, oh, don't worry, I got this. Uh, these guys are eating shit. I'll go up there and show them what I'm made of. And then uh, I, like, it's, it's like, like very mediocre, not going well. And then I'm dialing up my last punchline, last punchline, and this guy just d- yells. He goes, what? <laughs> He screams like I was like I said something about being in jail and he goes, Where were you? Did you sign the papers? And I go, What? And then I was like, I said the last line and then just like goodbye and got off. It was so bad. You just like, said what and then continued on with what I, I you were just saying? Like, I didn't know what yeah, I was just like, What? And everybody's like <gasps> and then I like repeated the punchline and I was like, Alright, <laughs> goodbye. It was so, especially coming off like those crowd work clips make it look so easy. I know, I know. (laughs) And I was just like, but it was, it was a bad audience because like everybody either was really tense or really wasted. Uh huh. And it wasn't like a guy. Of course, I'm saying this now because, uh, you know, in hindsight, whatever. It was not a guy that, like, you could talk to. He tried talking to me after the show. He was like, he tried saying something to me. It didn't make any sense, you know. There, I did a show at Looney's. What was it? Maybe a year ago, I was hosting, and Ed Bell was featuring. Uh And a guy came up to us after the show, um, and he went to Ed, and he was like, Hey, man, great set. Absolutely incredible. You were so funny. One of my new favorites. Nice. And then he looked at me, and he was like, You were, I think, you would have been better on, (laughs) like, a... On like a TikTok or something, and I was like, "Excuse me," and he was like, "I think you're you would be better in like quick increments, but watching your whole set, it's just like it's a lot. Wow, it's a lot to take in all at once." Wow. And I went, "I don't I don't know what that means. It's a lot to take in at once. What does that mean?" And then also, un- this is unrelated to the point I'm making, but then he offered um, Ed crack. Nice. He was like, "Well, he was like my his girlfriend was like, let's go." He was trying to tell us a joke uh-huh. about like classic. You know, autistic people are actually the most retarded people, if you yeah, think yeah. about it. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then he was like, his girlfriend was trying to get him to leave. He's like, sorry, she wants to go smoke crack. Uh, do you want, do you want to smoke crack? Do you want to smoke crack with us? And I was a little upset he didn't have offer yeah. me any crack. Yeah. <laughs> I guarantee that, even though you saw that all go down, and you were like, damn, I still want that guy's validation. Right? <laughs> I still wanted him <laughs> to think I was the guy doing crack. You know what's yeah. funny about that, too, is that, like, why does that guy even wh- there's nothing wrong with going up to ed and be like hey, great, great set. set and then like to you be like yeah, you too whatever you don't need lie to me yeah something lie to you or just even be, be like, polite but it's always funny that happened this happened to me so many times where somebody's like awesome set they look at you and they're like they just give you a little head nod you're like so- anything yeah, yeah but like that's even but be- but that's better than him being like well now i gotta give my yeah. uh diagnosis on this situation does that happen after like piano recitals yeah, where they're like, yeah. "Hey, kid, great job." You? Uh, <laughs> not for me. When you went into <laughs> Beethoven's Ninth, uh, a little overplayed. All right? Reductive. Yeah. <laughs> all right, chill out. Yeah. No, I don't know. It's like weird advice. Oh, dude. Okay. Speaking of inappropriate jokes, I was just at a trade show. You got some- what? Uh, no, I'm excited uh, for I, what you're about to say. I was just at a trade show. <laughs> And for my work, I want to tell you about I, I Yeah, we are, I work for a supplement company. Okay. We're there. We're, like, trying to meet new buyers. And this guy, like, the problem with it, tra- have you been to a trade show? Yeah, before? yeah, These trade shows, you end up, like, you want to meet buyers for stores to buy your product. And you end up spending 90% of the time talking to people who want to sell you something. And oh, gotcha. And this guy, like, comes over. He's, like, like a short like pudgy guy with slick back hair he's like hey i live in las vegas and i got some really good connections and 
we're like trying to kind of like there's some like, important people behind him. We're trying to make, make eye, eye contact. contact. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he just keeps on going. And he goes, "All right, I'll leave you with a joke." Who delivers? And he okay. The best part is he's got a lisp, like a speech impediment. Uh-huh. And he goes, "Who delivers white babies? The dog. Who delivers black babies? Blackbird. Who delivers no babies? A swallow." <laughs> and we just sit there and we stare at him and we're like. Nice right. man. Okay. Like, <laughs> goes I swallow. <laughs> like for emphasis, huh? Maybe you didn't hear me. Uh, and then we're like, dude, you gotta get the fuck out of here, please. <laughs> I don't get the like. I've had that happen so many times in professional settings where someone's like, "All right, before we end this meeting, let me leave you with a joke." Like, yeah, no, yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is not the place for that at all. Especially at a trade show, uh, like an inappropriate joke. Yeah, like, that, like you know? what if you swallowed a jacket? Yeah, yeah. So do you want to buy my koozies? Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what that has to do with the other one. You're like in bed that night. You're like, no, I want to do business with uh, <laughs> that really <laughs> that short fat guy who got that killer joke. Who I I I don't. In my head, I go, what What do you think is the opposite end of this? Inter- like, once you do that, what do you think happens at the end of this? Yeah. I think about that all the time when people are getting arrested from the cop videos, and they, like, they're handcuffed, there's a knee on the back of their neck, and they're going, I don't consent to this, I don't consent to this. Are you, are you hoping that the cop's like, oh, Stupid me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were consenting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Never mind. Yeah, I'll yeah. let you up now. Whether or not you should be getting arrested is a, a a question, but like, I don't know what you thought that was doing. You just yelled, "I don't consent for four. Okay, he knows. Yeah, he's well aware that you're not consenting. He's not gonna let you go Honestly, now. Honestly, you gotta. Sometimes you just gotta throw things <laughs> out. I, See I, you throw on a wall, see what sticks. Honestly, so I got a, uh, when I was uh, 14, I went to the, my parents were out of town, and I went to the town fair, and my, somebody gave me a handle of Gordon's Vodka. What, uh, where is this? This is in Walnut Creek, California. This is okay. the area. And I just had like an awesome freshman football, I got my first interception, I'm oh, feeling good. Okay. Yeah. It's like I coming off a Big man time. on campus. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I go to the Wana Festival with this girl, and one of my friends, and I drink like two water bottles worth of, worth of vodka. <laughs> and I arrive to the festival, and I immediately get arrested. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> immediately, Instantaneously. Immediately, I see a cop. I'm like, oh, and I try walking away. He throws me on the ground. He fucks me up. I wake you up. You pointed at him and went, what? Oh, yeah, <laughs> he's yeah. like, well, clearly, yeah, that's the guy. Hey, he fucks me up. They did not need to throw me on the ground. I was a 14 year old boy. Yeah, I was like 140 pounds. Um, and I wake up in the hospital. And I, and mind you, I grew up like knowing how to get out of trouble. Sure. Like, I'm a pretty good liar to adults. You know, I can work my way around uh-huh. the situation. I woke up, and I did, like, the fr- it immediately, like, I know what happened. I'm like, oh, I'm in a hospital. That's a nurse. Context clues. up, and I literally look at her, and she goes, are you awake? And I go, peer pressure. <laughs> she goes, what? I'm like, peer pressure. She goes, peer pressure made you do this it was like but in that moment i was like dude that like was my final attempt to get out of trouble even though i completely instigated i completely spearheaded the whole thing wait 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 wait. someone else made me do it yeah exactly yeah yeah i I didn't want to do this but i like the whisper i like the coy yeah peer pressure i swear to god and then she did not buy it my parents showed up i was grounded for nine years after that also like the nurse is the police yeah and she's like well get on out of here then like no your arms guys i'm going to bat for this kid right (laughs) (laughs) i swear to god that like i never i'll never forget that because i was just like i this is like a hail mary it's fourth and 30 i'm on my own 10 yards see what sticks yeah but you know so somebody's saying something to the cop you know you might you could say something maybe it works out (laughs) right i did uh i i uh oh it looks like we need we gotta wrap up so yeah yeah, yeah. i uh i was in a, a big car accident in like 2017 my fault which was very cool um I was going down I-25, and there's a part where it goes from three lanes to two lanes. Uh-huh. And I was I was literally looking in the rearview mirror, pulling nose hairs out because nice. I wanted to look handsome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I look down, and, oh, traffic has come to a stop, uh-huh. and I'm still going 70. Jesus. So I went into the shoulder, 
but there was like gravel. So ins I was like planning to swerve into the shoulder and then just ride it out in there and hit my brakes and I'm gonna look stupid. But I think I, I swerved too fast and then there was like gravel in there so it like kicked my back wheels out and I came back into traffic. Uh -huh. And I just nailed this SUV with a whole family. Yeah, in it. Me trying to pick uh, my nose hairs definitely almost killed a family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Luckily, no one was hurt. And then I spun out into I-25. Luckily, no one hit me. Um, yeah, really should, like, everyone should be dead. Really uh, my fault. Just trying to be handsome. Everybody okay. And when my car came to a halt, literally my first thought was, how do I get out of this? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was not like, oh, my God, what if Those I... Those poor people! <laughs> 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 not like, can I feel my legs? How not could I spin this, right? It was, how do I get out of this? And I was like, okay, <sighs> you have glasses. <laughs> Maybe you sneezed so hard while driving that your glasses fell off and you were reaching for them. But I'm like, is that better than, <laughs> like, I was literally uh, trying yeah, to... Yeah, we're going to take your license away. You should now be on the road. <laughs> I, I was just sitting there and I'm like... <sighs> What if I pretend to be hurt really bad? Yeah, <laughs> like, what yeah, if I pretend uh, like my yeah. back hurts? What if I faked my own death? <laughs> what so if I everybody felt so bad for me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was the worst. Was it like, really told me what kind of person I am. Hey, when what? push comes to shove, I'm like, yeah, not this family. Dear God in heaven, what have I done? What have these hands <laughs> portrayed? It was just how do I... How do I make sure no one can sue me? Well, what did I say? You know, it's not about how you initially react. It's how you move forward, you know? <laughs> and I went out and fake cried. Nice, nice. Yeah, I fake cried. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not real at all. <laughs> Peer pressure? <Yeah. laughs> to crashing? I don't know. I'm just seeing what, I'm just seeing what happens. I'm just yeah. seeing what you'll take. Uh, well, hey, Ryan, we're, we're at over an hour. Hell Let's yeah. get this show started. Real quick, before we end, the whole gimmick, uh -huh. technically, of the podcast is uh, drink a weird soda, uh -huh. and we haven't done that yet. So no pressure. No one likes any of these sodas except for me. Uh -huh. So have have a sip of it. Tell me if you think it's bad. Uh, I will have one small soda. This, uh, this is not something I normally would. Uh, it looks like you need a bottle up and everything. No so. way. Yeah. Let me try. <gasps> Whoa. You got out of it. All right. You don't have a bottle opener. <laughs> the whole thing is... Uh, yeah, comedians always bully me because I don't drink. Uh -huh. And they're like, but you drink soda. And I'm like, yeah, that's cooler than alcohol. Uh, and then I'm like, this is neon blue. Hell yeah. And I know, I've know i seen videos of you doing yoga and such. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, I bet he's he seems like a healthy guy. You should have brought me an Olipop. Have you had an Olipop before? No. Those are like uh, these prebiotic sodas. <gasps> Damn no, no free advertisements. <laughs> on the podcast, but, uh, they're like they're awesome. They're like you know, two grams of sugar. They got like like yeah, they got different flavors. They're awesome. They're made with like real fruit juice and stuff like oh, that. Oh, I was thinking this is neon blue Jick Jack blue raspberry. I've never had it. Yeah, I bet he'll take a sip and go, I don't like that. Yeah, and I go, definitely cool. would not like. And it then if I, I get two sodas. Nice, <laughs> That's nice. the well, whole trick. So there you go. Buddy. We'll just have to find out on the way home. I'll yeah. dr I'll smash one of these on the ground and. Yeah. Well, I think I got a bottle opener inside, so. I'll go drink an Olipop. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I blew the whole gimmick of the episode. This is what people care about. This is why people tune this in. This is why like, people ah, tune man, in. I'm driving. I wish I could fast forward to the end. <laughs> I to wish the I knew. Part. <laughs> uh, that's fine. I blow something on every. At last episode, the batteries died twice. Nice. Uh, episode before that, the guest canceled on me so it was just me alone in a hotel room uh, every episode something goes terribly nice. wrong so this is just the next one well imagine we drank these no one cares i'll come back we'll do some <laughs> olipops How's that, sound? <laughs> that sounds yeah, good yeah, yeah, yeah. next time you're around uh do you want to plug your showcase here in denver in yeah, case my cousin who lives in golden hears about it we got uh uh second tuesday second wednesday of the month corner beat a very cool showcase uh, in Cap Hill. And then we actually, I have a new show. Oh. Yeah, we got a new show. It's unnamed right now, but it's going to be coming the second and fourth Thursday of the month. Okay. I don't think that, does that matter when you tell people which, like, Friday it is? I don't think people actually keep track of that, do they? I I have been telling people Pike's Punks is the last Saturday of every month. That's the, easy, that's for, the easiest one. For though. three years, and no one has any yeah, idea okay, when right. the show is. So we're trying to like figure this out because we're like, oh, this Thursday uh, falls on a holiday, so do we do it on a different date? Are people going to be mad? But I'm like, I don't think anyone's going to give up. <laughs> uh, so anyway, second and fourth. 
Thursday at the Thin Man in Uptown. Really cool downstairs space. It's like awesome uh, downstairs space with like a stage and completely separate from the bar. Nice. Uh, it's really intimate. It'll be cool. Going to be more of like a workout room, but we'll definitely have to get you on there too. So. That's why I have a podcast. That's so why people right. feel obligated to offer me shows. Yeah, I would love to get you on, on it. Pa- <laughs> you can't back out. Contractually <laughs> obligated. But all right, I need to go set up. Go uh, set up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll tear down. Sweet. I'll see you in 30 minutes. All right, buddy. All right, bye. Dude, that was fun.